Hello, I'm Art Hunter. I'm going to make a presentation to you on the advantages of community microgrids. This really is the closing comments for the main presentation known called um, the electric throttle for our energy transition. After nearly a decade of study, design, development, operations, and living in a single home microgrid, I've been interacting with grid managers and delivering multiple presentations. I continue to monitor the world as it makes significant steps to electrifying everything. Aggregations of multiple single building microgrids leads to community microgrids. The four major components of these community microgrids are building energy supply and demand, geothermal heating and cooling, electricity and heat, energy storage, and a very special place for electric vehicles. These um, components, when functioning as a signal system, uh, are leading the energy transition off fossil fuels while delivering 20 very significant social and financial benefits. Many of these benefits are not financial, but they are very significant in, in value to community residents. It's a substantial simultaneous winning outcome for the stakeholders of the building owners, community residents, and grid managers. I'd like to start off and identify that uh, the plan here, of course, is to dig digitize and electrify and decarbonize a, a building. And in my case, the, the home is, has demand energy, which is 82% thermal and 18% electricity. We look on the left-hand side here, we have demands which are lighting, cooking, computing, appliances, as well as the uh, requirement to charge an electric car, the heating and cooling of of the of the building is is a demand as well as heating hot water. If you notice there's two colors here. the the black outline is addressing the electricity supply and demand, and the orange is addressing heating and cooling. In storage, we're looking at two types of storage. One is electricity through home batteries, and the other is storing heat and cool in the ground. Sources and sinks uh, include uh, solar, the grid itself, there is a special heater I have employed to be able to provide heat ultimately for ground storage through the geothermal heat pumps. And of course, uh, the dotted lines indicate that there are, are management computers that are connected to, to all these elements. The 20 advantages of community microgrids start off, of course, with the the uh, obvious, very low operating costs for consumers, utilities, and, and suppliers, which, which also means uh, reductions in potential government subsidies. Uh, second one is reduced poverty by isolating from, from inflation. Uh, energy has demonstrated through history with a, a one-way flow of ever increasing cost and you want to avoid those those cost growths community microgrid will do that and provide for very stable and predictable costs well into the future uh the third one of is social uh equity well there, it's bias free energy is bias free and generating jobs and affordable housing for all as well as um, providing health, which means food, potable water, and personal hygiene, uh, which everyone needs. 
The fourth is it saves lives through supply reliability as well as uh, uh, improving shelter safety and survivability. This really is a, a, almost a, a, an insurance value, insurance on your, the investments that have been made into, into a, a personal microgrid and, of course, aggregated in a, in a community microgrid. Number five says improve resilience and liberation from a fragile grid. Well, we all know that grid outages uh, do generate fear, frustration, inconvenience, primarily due to damage that comes from food spoilage, sump pump flooding, health impacts, and even death. There, uh, there's some significant damage that, that can be uh, laid on a, a structure from from the very uh, weather event itself, blowing down trees and and uh, airborne uh, projectiles, including hail. Six, increase energy awareness and delivery on the expectation of of residents uh, by by creating jobs. Number seven, an opportunity for communities to generate their own electricity and, and join virtual power plants. A virtual power plant is, of course, where, in fact, a number of microgrids get together and generate sufficient power as a small nuclear reactor. Allow communities to manage their own energy consumption and, and this means you know, more jobs. And it provides flexibility, independence, and, and freedom. Freedom from the grid. The ninth is encouraging innovation and neighbor, neighborhood assistance, assistance without the use of fossil fuel generators. We all know the, the noise and smell of, of fossil fuel generators. Number 10 is quite important. It provides community pride and, and uh, the image associated with that community's long-term uh, livability and economic development. The 11th is it enables communities to sell surface energy back to the utility, which also strengthens the grid and provides for uh, energy arbitrage, which really means buy your energy at low cost and sell it at a higher cost. Twelfth one provides utility stability as what it's doing, it's permitting the utility to defer updating their grid delivery system. And, and of course, uh, delaying congestion that might occur in, in that area of the grid, as well as uh, utility repair cost avoidance due to weather extremes. If the telephone poles aren't there, then you don't have a repair cost exposure. 13, provides opportunities for communities to buy energy from other sources. Like, like other communities. So, so in fact, this really means a community of communities that can work together and, and provide redundant paths and, and uh, a long distance away from central generating facilities. Fourteenth is reduce pollution and encourage compatibility with nature. And this really means do no harm just like our indigenous people to become part of nature rather than, than in fact, harming nature. 15th is expand operational versatility because the community microgrid really becomes a haven, you know, during the, the adverse weather event or whatever the disaster was and Afterwards, until such time as services are, are restored, people want a place to go to be able to meet with their neighbors and 
communicate with their their loved ones and and uh, uh, to to solve problems together. Sixteenth is, uh, of course, reduction of greenhouse gas emissions, and many many people are very carbon sensitive, and they're they're seeking uh, ways to become part of the climate. Uh, disaster mitigation act actions. And 17, improved shelter security. But by this, I mean, there's uh, people have alarms and, and motion detecting cameras, doorbells and, and other things, which <clears throat> give them peace of mind. And <clears throat> with uh, a microgrid, of course, they, they remain active. It also protects against cyber attacks, which may not be a big issue here in Ontario, but it is certainly is in, in Ukraine. 18th, contribute to sustainable development, including electric vehicle uh, to grid connectivity. This is not a big issue as well uh, here in Ontario because it has not been permitted, but in the future, it will become quite substantial as the number of EVs uh, grow to be uh, a very significant part of our, our mobility infrastructure. And 19, maintain power quality from aging infrastructure. And by this, I really mean you've got voltage spikes, for example, at uh, outage time and, and at startup again. Um, which can damage TV sets, um, computers, and, and, and other electronics. You want to be isolated from that. And improve the community image as well as quality of life and, and well-being. And that, this really means things like uh, relief of stress due to, to potential um, outage damage, which everyone is familiar with. Thank you very much. And that is the end of this, this presentation.